Mushroom season is here, temperatures are dropping and humidity in the forest is on the rise. A perfect combination for mushrooms to pop up. I really, really love this period of the year. A perfect opportunity to pick up my camera and to head to the woods. Mushrooms have something magical. They seem to come straight out of a fairy tale. And they really trigger our imagination. And lead us back to a fantasy world. A fantasy world that only existed when we were kids. A mystery world that we've almost forgotten, but then there's autumn to remind us. The enchanted forest still exists. Now, we want to capture this magical world. While shooting a picture of a mushroom is quite easy. Shooting a picture coming straight out of a fairy tale is a little bit more complicated. But difficult doesn't mean impossible. What you need is patience, the right camera techniques and a good amount of imagination. In this video I'm going to give you some tips on how to create pictures of enchanted mushrooms. In the world of fairies, we are giants. We look upon them from above and that's one of the main reasons we can't see them. It's the wrong perspective we're looking at. We have to get at their level, we have to go down, not just a little bit, we have to go all the way down. So put your camera on the forest floor and shoot upwards. Now this small scene has taken up a whole new dimension. The mushroom seems to be huge. And another big advantage of this low angle is the fact that we create more depth. But there's still no fairies in these pictures. It's still a normal mushroom. It's big, but still a normal mushroom. So shooting from a low angle changes perspective, but it's not enough to really trigger my imagination. So what more do we need? Have a closer look at these images. They're quite nice, but there's a lot of distractions. The images are far too busy. They're shot at an aperture of f16 and have a wide depth of field. The mushrooms are in focus from front to back and there's a lot of detail in the background. There's not much mystery left in these images. We can see the whole forest behind the mushrooms. Actually, this is more or less what we normally see. Now, I want to get rid of all these distractions. I want to look at the world in a different way. So I open up my aperture and shoot the images wide open. This changes the mood of the images instantly. Distractions are gone and the background has become soft and dreamy. Now the mushroom draws all attention. So. Opening up the aperture is a big help. Now only a very small part of the mushroom is in focus. And quite often there's just enough in focus to make the picture work. But I don't always shoot my images wide open. Sometimes I want more detail and sharpness in the mushroom. Like in this image for example. Where I close down the aperture to f5. So I can see more detail in the mushroom and have a little bit more sharpness. The background is still soft and painterly. I don't want to get too much detail in the background. So I have to make a trade-off between the amount of sharpness and the amount of blur in the image. I try to find the right balance between the two. Sometimes a mushroom just needs a little bit more sharpness. But it's also possible that I want a little bit more detail in the background. Like in this image for example, shot with a 50mm lens at f1.4. There's almost no detail in the background. But when I close down the aperture to f4, the details in the background become more obvious and they really add to the image. So I have to close down the aperture a little bit. Finding the right aperture can be tricky, especially in the beginning. But the more you practice and the more you experiment, the easier it will become. Now, how much should be in focus? Well, that's a personal choice. I prefer a dreamy feel over sharpness, while you might want a little bit more in focus. You'll have to try to find your own personal taste. So, going low and choosing a wide aperture will help to create a different mood. But is it enough to tell a fairy tale? Well, no. These images are also shot from a low angle 
and have a narrow depth of field. They look okay, but for me, they're missing that magical touch. Now, you might ask, what are they missing? Well, for me, they miss quite a lot. They miss light. They miss an attractive background. They miss context and they miss depth. First of all, for me, background is key in creating appealing pictures. For me, the background is as important as the main subject itself. When I'm looking for a flower or a mushroom to shoot, I always have a look at its surroundings first. What are the options for a good background? If there's no good background options, I mostly don't take the picture. I don't even try, because I know it won't really please me anyway. So, it's important to learn how to recognize a good background opportunity. And what I'm mainly looking for is light, color and contrast. A good background really brings a picture alive. And more info on the importance of a good background you can find in a different video I created. Mastering the art of effective backgrounds. Below this video you can find a link to it. Now, we already have three important elements we can use to tell our fairy tale. Shoot from a low angle, using a shallow depth of field and incorporating an interesting background. But there's more to it. You have to use your imagination and really try to tell a story. Tell the whole story. A close-up of a mushroom can be beautiful. And of course, you should shoot this kind of images too. But they don't really tell a story. They just say, hey, look, what a beautiful mushroom. No, if you really want to tell a story, you have to take all elements into account. Foreground, background, supporting subjects, light and composition. Give it some context. For example, if you want to show a lonely mushroom in a big forest, then make it a lonely mushroom. Give it space. Create the scene that you have envisioned. Really tell the story. And if you want to take a picture of a family, show where they live. Show the big trees in the background. Let the surroundings help you to tell the story and the images become more appealing. You can add some supporting subjects to the images. Other mushrooms, for example, and they don't even have to be in focus or some leaves like in this beautiful image. A simple extra element within the frame. Or you can even use a combination of several additional elements, as long as they help you to tell the story. So complete the image and don't limit your attention to the mushroom alone. While adding some extra elements in the scene really can help you to tell the story. There are some elements that you really want to avoid. Let's face it. Mushrooms grow in dirty places, and because of this, they can get dirt on them. Before you shoot, use a gentle brush or something else to remove anything from the surface of the mushroom. Avoid anything that can be a distraction. And don't forget to clean up the surroundings, remove debris that's distracting, and anything that's not adding to the story of the image. Keep it simple. And as an important extra, don't waste your time on a wet mushroom. Reflections created by a wet mushroom cap can really, really ruin the image, as you can see here. So use some tissue or something else to dry them up before you shoot them. So go low, use a shallow depth of field, include a beautiful background, complete the image to tell the whole story and avoid unwanting elements. If you do this, you're already on your way to tell wonderful fairy tales. And if you now also create a wonderful composition, then you might have a winner. At this moment, I have two masterclasses available. The Mushroom Light Painting Masterclass and the Flower Art Photography Masterclass. In both, I go more into detail on the techniques, gear, and skills you can apply to create amazing fairy tale like mushroom pictures. The Mushroom Light Painting Masterclass, quite obvious, uses techniques to create magical mushroom portraits. 
For these images, you need to do quite some work in uh, Photoshop, but you'll end up with images that really scream wow. In the masterclass, I show three different ways to let the mushrooms glow. Depending on the kind of mushroom, they need a different approach. The Flower Art Photography Masterclass is totally different. Here the goal is to create the image in camera while shooting and to limit the post-processing to a minimum. All the mushroom images that you have seen are all shot by using techniques and skills I discuss in great detail in the Flower Art Photography Masterclass. Well, I could choose to create an additional masterclass just about mushroom photography, but actually there's no need to do this. All the techniques and equipment that's needed are explained in my Flower Art Photography Masterclass. Now we can go to the woods and have some fun. <laughs>